Archaeology is the process of uncovering old things, which is why it makes perfect sense that you can only do it in the newest versions of Minecraft. But how do you find a dig site in Minecraft 1.20? The easiest answer is to find the new structure, the Trail Ruins. This is actually the structure with the most variants in Minecraft. The Igloo has two, the Bastion has four, and the Trail Ruins has 69, which might seem high, but after all of the other options I'll be showing you in today's video, I guarantee will leave you satisfied. But let's dive into big update questions this is where I answer the biggest questions you might have about Minecraft 1.20 succinctly and easily. I love Minecraft updates on this channel and I love archaeology, something which was promised a long time ago but which has finally come back to the game in 1.20 in honestly a better way. But the easiest way to explain it is this is a mechanic which works entirely from suspicious sand and suspicious gravel. What's so suspicious about it? The texture is just slightly wrong, enough that you might notice it when it's side by side. And the only thing you can do about suspicious suspicious sand is not call the police like you might expect. It's not to, uh, you know, maybe uh, report it to someone, uh, you know, important in your life, which you should always be doing with suspicious behavior. But instead, uh, it is to craft yourself a brush, which is made like so. Do you like this fake crafting table we've got here? And if you use these three ingredients together, uh, you know, kind of like an arrow, but you use copper instead of a flint. Uh, if you use these three things together, you'll be able to do something wonderful and create a brush from scratch. This is something that's really useful, but for me to show you why, we need to go out into the world and I need to show you, but I'm probably gonna have to eat first because, you know, as much as I enjoyed building an entire biome out of the pots that I got from this, uh, it probably wasn't a very productive use of my time and you are not going to be able to find the biome of pots because you're not in my Minecraft world, but in any Minecraft world, you'll be able to take advantage of the most useful Minecraft structure now. Actually, before I show you the first structure, I should say, hello, my BX Toy Cat, how are you doing today? My day's actually going very desert well because this is a brand new structure for archaeology. It used to just be the best place you could find water in a desert. It was incredibly OP because where else can you find water in a desert? Precisely nowhere, I answer you. But if you have a brush, this is not only a source of water, but also a brand new source of archaeology. And that archaeology can be used to find an entirely different loot table. A fun and useful fact to keep in mind is that every single one of these structures will give you a slightly different loot table. The desert well does contain a lot of somewhat worthless items to balance out uh, the fact that it obviously is so useful for the water, uh, but it also will contain some unique pot shards, and also, uh, honestly, it's just one of the easiest ones to find. Venture through a desert long enough, and you'll find a desert well. If you want something a little higher quality, by the way, just a fun fact, uh, th this is worth mentioning as we go to the second place here, because I love desert wells, but I love desert temples even more, because they contain not just suspicious sand, but also some of the best loot in Minecraft. If you're early game looking to advance as fast as you can, it's always the desert temple and so I recommend before doing anything else break the pressure plate so you don't get killed by explosions and take the chest which might contain ah uh, look at that dune armor trims golden apples iron the power one book if you want these things come and get them while you can that is my biggest advice uh, but then you're going to want to take advantage of a new improvement to desert temples this will only apply to newly spawned desert temples of course there's a brand new room and uh, yeah there's a lot of sand dug along here but inside of that sand you'll find some suspicious sand and inside of that, we got some pot shards and we got some other pot shards right here. And just as a really useful fact, uh, you have to, so d using the brush on regular sand will just never work. So you want to either use a shovel or you can use the break function of the brush. However, two things to note. One is if suspicious sand falls, for some reason it's like glass and it just <laughs> full on shatters on you, turns into regular sand. Uh, but two is the fact that it won't use up any durability on your brush. You can break sand endlessly and the only thing that will use up the brush is when you do actual archaeology on pot shards like this one. This is in direct contrast to something like a flint and steel, where even though it's meant to be just used for fire, breaking it like, like this, this is actually one way to break it. You can use a fire over and over again if you want to break flint and steel, but also it will break just from breaking blocks. That's not true for the brush, which is really nice to see. And uh, also, you could get some TNT, which honestly is not a very good idea for archaeology. Trust me, I spoke to my local archaeologist and he said that actually they recommend against using explosions uh, to find out what's went here because you won't get any pot shards and you might blow up some things that are important to you like your friends and family. 
Let's be honest, your friends and family aren't that important to you. Okay, I'll be honest, I don't have any friends and family. That's why I'm going scuba diving by myself, which is what you actually need to do. I recommend bringing one of these if you're going to do so. A lovely water-breathing potion can be nice. I think a good alternative is a conduit if you want to be real fancy. Uh, but you want to find yourself something really fun, which is ocean ruins. In the warm ocean ruins, i.e. oceans with sand at the bottom, if you look around here, you might just find some suspicious sand. Oh look, we've got a handy arrow pointing us to it. And inside of it, we're going to find a whole gold nugget. Keep in mind, you know, keep your expectations tiny and you're not going to be whiny. This is really important when it comes to archaeology. You're not going to find very much here, but it's not just warm ocean ruins. You can also find cold ocean ruins. And uh, cold is defined by gravel because you'd have to be a cold-hearted killer to believe that gravel was useful. But still, it's really a great secondary place to find ocean ruins. Anywhere at the bottom of the ocean you find these, you'll find those. And if you also want to find some amethyst geodes, just just go below Y30, and now you can double dip on finding this and that. Speaking of double dipping, the ultimate double dip has to be the trail ruins. When you're digging underground, you might find Minecraft's newest structure, and I'd love to give you an easy guide on how to find them. And, uh, you know, like, the simplest answer is like, well, if you wanted to find them, you just dig along. And what do they look like? If a giant were to eat all the blocks in Minecraft and throw them up. And honestly, yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, th these were designed very specifically to have have an archaeological feel, but uh, to me, they just look absolutely wild. I think it's the ugliest structure in Minecraft, but that's because it isn't designed to be pretty. Long time ago, it might have been designed to be pretty, but at that point in time, we thought orange glazed terracotta was a good idea. Or oh, is that blue? Honestly, it's hard to be sure. Um, and so there's a lot of these, and it's the only location in the world where you can find mud bricks. So if you don't want to go dealing with mud, this is a great opportunity to get a ton of those, and I kind of like that as a piece of uh, function. So how do you find them? You find them underground. How do you go underground? Well, you use a pickaxe and then you do stuff uh, or you use magic teleportation if it's a YouTube video Where you're just trying to show off that yeah This is something really fun that you'll find underground and inside of it. What will you maybe find? Oh Suspicious gravel, so there are lots of exclusive items found only here I mean apparently blue stained glass is one of them you ever wanted blue stained glass panes Just come here and collect a bunch of them uh, But yeah more seriously you can find all sorts of armor runes you can find candles You can find all sorts of belongings from a lost world and I think it is is pretty realistic in Minecraft that you do find this stuff because in the real world most archaeological finds are pure worthlessness like you know do we really want a pottery shard you're gonna have to combine it with a lot of others to make that worthwhile which wow speaking of combining stuff with others uh, that's a really good point also most trail ruins were spawned deep underground um, you usually don't find them on the surface anymore that is a bug but if you want to take advantage of the bug look around on the surface for anything that looks like these bizarre blocks and you might just be able to dig down speaking of digging down uh, there are many variants of these structures and uh, it's, it's, it's pretty cool to me that you can find bricks naturally as well. Um, but speaking of, uh, you know, the, the point here is realistically, these are a great structure to get your hands on these new decorated plants. A lot of people are nostalgic for the old style of trail ruins, which we built right here to show you. And although there was a fun idea behind this, like a pre-made archaeology site, I think the new version is actually you going into the world, finding some stuff and making it great. And I really like that personally. But speaking of making the stuff, if you want to learn more about these pots that you can make, I've got a whole video about pots, how you make them, why they're useful, what you do of them, how firing works, and that is going to be the third in my big update questions, happening every two hours a day. This is the craziest day for videos I've had in many, many years, but I hope you're all enjoying it, and if so, like, subscribe, or anything else you do to videos you like, because I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye! <laughs>